So in today's video, we're going to look at one of the most important elements of geometric drawing, which is how to draw a bisector, so how to divide an angle exactly in two. It's very useful in a lot of areas of geometry, and it's also a mean of doubling any division of the circle that you know. And this video is part of the toolbox series where we look at basic elements of geometric drawing. You can subscribe to not miss anything. And my name is Lucy Rose. I've been doing geometric drawing for many years. I also do research on um, the geometry of Gothic rose windows. You can find more information in the description. But for today's video, let's have a look at how to bisect an angle. So to understand how to bisect an angle and how that helps us with the divisions of the circle, we're going to start with some random angles examples. So I'm going to, on this left hand side here, draw like four um, random angles just to practice. So you can try and vary the um, sort of um, shape of the angle, like a more acute or a more um, a wider, more obtuse angle to see how it works um, with different types of angle. And then I will use a four full division uh, on the right hand side to um, explain this further. So on the first um, example here, so the principle of the bisector is that we have two steps to it. So we use the compass, we choose a random first measure, which usually is like I don't know, a little bit more than half of the side of the angle to start it with in this example. Let's say this. And I make a little mark on each side of my angle. And that means that the marks on each side of the angle are an equal distance to the exact angle. So that's step one. Now for step two, you can keep the same measure but you can also change it, and I will show it afterwards. Um, so in this version, this is step two, we're keeping the same measure, and I'm going to draw a new arc, so you could draw like all the way inside the angle, but I'm going to minimize it. I know I'm looking for a bisector, it's going to be a line in the middle of my angle, so I'm drawing my arc roughly where that line is going to go. And using exactly the same measure from the other um, side of my angle, I find the intersection. So that is the most basic way to draw a bisector. And now I can link the angle to the intersection and you get a line that divides the angle into equal parts. And if you've lined up correctly, this should be exact. Now, there are um, occasions where we might want to um, change the size of the opening of the compass um, between the two steps because it's going to vary on the intersection. So let me show you. So if I choose a little bit bigger opening on the compass of the compass on this example here, and I do my first step, so same distance on each side of my angle. And I will say I keep the same, um, I'm going to change color for this one. So I'm going to start off from the marks I've made. And first it's roughly the same distance. So I make my little arc in the middle. It falls there. Now if I use um, a shorter measure, I'm going to have an intersection closer to my angle and it has a slightly different shape. And if you get it too small, it's just not going to cross in the end. That's the only thing you risk. And you can also go bigger. And if you go bigger, the only thing you risk is the intersection falling sort of outside of your drawing. But you can, you can go quite far away and you would still get an intersection on the same line. Now the thing is, depending on the shape of your angle, so for instance if I was doing it on this one, on a more 
acute angle. If you use the same um, measure on the two steps, you might get quite a, a flat intersection. So here, for example, here it's harder to find the exact center of that intersection. It's not impossible, it's totally doable, but it's kind of harder to be precise with this. So this is why I personally um, prefer doing, so for instance, in the example of a circle or things like this. So I'm going to go like as big as I can on the first step. So I'm going as far away as I can on this first step. And then on the second step, I'm going to choose a much um, shorter distance. So see now my intersection is even closer to my drawing, which can be more comfortable. And also, more importantly, the intersection is more perpendicular and therefore it's easier to really hit the center of that intersection and be precise. So this is the method I prefer to use. So I go as large as I can on the first step and then go much shorter on the second step. And I can control like this where my intersection falls if I want it further away, closer, um, that kind of thing. And here we still have one angle to practice on. So um, I wouldn't recommend starting off with a smaller uh, version and then going bigger just because it would, um, I don't know, it feels less precise somehow. I don't have like a proof for, for it. And also it's a much flatter intersection again. So again, I prefer doing it this way. Wider intersection first smaller intersection and uh, not intersection sorry measure and there so you can practice that until you're comfortable and until like if i say bisect this angle you just know what to do it's this is a very useful um thing in geometry to learn to do and to just know to do without having to think too much about it now we're going to use the example of a circle divided in four and divide it further in eight and in 16. We've already seen how to divide in eight in the, in the video on the square and the eight pointed stars, but I'm going to explain something slightly different here. Let's start with a vertical line. Draw a circle. And remember you can use three quarters of the diameter roughly to find your perpendicular line. By the way, when you're doing this, this step um, of the drawing the perpendicular for the square, what you're basically doing is that you're dividing a flat angle in two. So you're bisecting um, this flat angle. So here, this line is because we have the circle, the circle is the first step, the circle is the first arc that's giving us equal distance from the center on each side of the line. And then this is the second step where I choose a measure that gives me an intersection that falls where I want. So this is already basically bisecting an angle. So once you've done this, you can draw the perpendicular line and we can go further and divide this in eight. So in the other video, which you can have a look at, um, we use the radius of the circle specifically because it gives us the corners of a square that's going to fit outside of the circle. Now, following from what we just said, you could use any measure for this and it would work as long as you keep the same measure on each side of um, the angle. So, for example, here, if I use, like we said, the same radius of as a circle, then you draw your little intersection there. This would be the corner of a square surrounding the circle. Um, but as we've seen, you could use a smaller measure, just like this. As long as this is the same measure from each side, it's going to fall on the same 
um, line on the same division, you can go also further away, still on the same line. So I'm going to use something. So you could use this because you can you could want to have something very close to your circle. For example, this measure. And you go all around doing that. And that gives you a division in eight now. And so you can carry on doing that. Um, so if I divide this even further, I could now bisect this angle, choosing a you know smallish measure. Usually you take like a little bit more than half of the arc, just eyeballing it. And that will give you this little intersection. And you go around your circle every time the circle is cut by one of your existing division. And it gives you eight more little intersections. There. And now you can use them. You link opposite ones uh, on the circle going through the center. This is your checkpoint that you're really um, drawing a symmetry axis and that everything has gone right. It should all go through your center. And that divides the circle in 16. So you see how using the bisector you can um, go from any division of the circle and just multiply it by two. Um, so if you know how to divide in six, then you know how to, and you know the bisector, then you know how to divide in 12, in 24, in 48, etc. Um, we've done four, eight, and 16, it goes on. If you know how to divide in five, then you can also divide it in 10, 20, 40, etc. Um, for other divisions, such as the fivefold, uh, you have a shortcut. So you don't have to do all the little crosses like this, but we'll come back to this in a, in a future uh, video. Also, so this is bisecting an angle, dividing the angle in two. That's very um, easy to do. As you can see, it's one of the basis of, of geometry. Um, however, trisecting an angle, so cutting the angle in three, is, is mathematically impossible. But as we mentioned sometimes in this channel, um, there's a difference between the math theory and the practical geometry. So we'll come back to trisecting the angle um, in a future video as well. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and practice it so that bisecting an angle really um, come, becomes a habit and you don't really have to think about it again. Um, if you want to follow my work, you remember you can follow me on Instagram on Lucy Rose Geometry for the geometry stuff, on Lucy Rose Art for the artwork. Um, you can also have a look at the Geometry Cafe, which is a monthly live, live session where we do some geometry things and talk about geometry and it's recorded and you have access to past recordings so have a look at that in the description and you can also sign up to my newsletter if you don't want to miss information about all the online courses that I give and see you next time